at your end step is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello, and welcome to At Your End Step. My name is Morgan, I'm here with Mike. Hello. And Dave. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's the sound of the police. <laughs> whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the bees. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have another fun filled episode for you folks this week. We uh, have a, a couple things to uh, uh, talk about the uh, for the community uh, segment. Of course, we are in the midst of uh, uh, Masters 25 spoilers, so we uh, wanted to talk uh, a little bit about those. And um, we actually got uh, a little bit of information about some future Master sets as well. I just picture, like, the way you said that, just like, like we're on... <laughs> In the field, weatherman just being like the Masters twenty five promo. They're just they're everywhere. Uh, oh God, here come, it's like Armageddon out here. Because <laughs> that's one of the cards that's in yep. the set, so the joke works. It's good. Maybe we'll get uh, a hurricane. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say maybe we'll get a hurricane, a blue hurricane. Ooh, that mm-hmm. would be a real cool one. What set somebody put on for that one? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oops. Wait, this wasn't in a set, technically? I mean, it was in, like, was it Alt 4th Edition? It was Summer Magic, which technically <laughs> wasn't officially released. Right. Which is um, why the card is so rare. It's the Raisin Bran Sun with sunglasses and two scoops. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, GP Memphis, of course, to uh, to talk about. And then we have a, a question a week regarding the Challenger decks that were uh, also recently, the, the deck lists were recently uh, revealed to us. So, um, And then we have our what's coming up uh, over the weekend, uh, typical stuff. So let's get started with the uh, community segment. Uh, so like we said, um, uh, we do have some more information about future master sets. Um, and I think the, the this was an article written by Gavin Berhe. Yes. Um, and the main gist of it, um, from what uh, I understand, is that they are going to be not necessarily focusing on uh, formats, but more themes. Um, so no or less Eternal Masters or Modern Masters, more iconic masters or things of that nature, uh, basically, which I think is a good move uh, in all honesty. Um, there's only so many times you can get, you know, you could say modern masters a year or eternal masters, you know, X, Y, Z, um, and, and uh, moving into uh, more theming, uh, probably allows them to build a, uh, better draft environment. Um, I would have to imagine. So we'll, we'll see what that, you know, happens with it. But, uh, um, did they uh, did you mention anything about sort of release schedules as far as that goes going forward or anything like that? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was just outlining how they're going to approach you know master sets going forward. Um, I I agree with what they what they're doing there. I mean, it it feels to me like modern the modern master sets kind of ran their course. Like they've printed all the cards that they need to print it need to print and at this at this point we're just like you know seeing reprints of reprints yeah which is fine i mean i'm, I'm all for getting more copies of cards out there to make magic cheaper to play right but uh yeah i ho- hopefully they're more like uh masters 25 so from what we've seen so far and less like iconic masters which is kind of a dud well I think that saying that you think Modern Masters ran its course, but that Iconic Masters was a dud, I think that throws a wrench into all that. So I think I, that the Modern Masters sets were very, very cohesive in their vision, right? Um, yeah. I understand what you're saying about running out of cards to reprint from that card pool, but I think those sets only got better. Like, Modern Masters 3 is one of the best draft formats, in my opinion, ever. Yeah, I'm, well... So, like, it was, I mean, it was wonderful. It was, it was so much fun to draft. And this, and the sets were worthwhile card wise. And Eternal Masters, I thought was a pretty good set. And then like Iconic Masters, I think was terrible. Uh, Twenty five has yet to to really fully reveal itself, but mm-hmm. I think like going thematically, where you're trying to appease modern players and cube players and legacy players and commander players, if you're trying to do it all the time in these sets, then I I don't think you're going to see that streamlined vision uh, where, that you had before, and you're going to end up with sloppy sets. And I think Iconic Masters was a sloppy set, so I don't think oh, I actually like this. I, I'm not saying Iconic Masters was good. I think that set was horrible. Um, but I think that's where I, you're going. I, I, I think that's where you go when you move away from modern masters. I right. think you get into sets. I'm like saying that. hopefully it's not like that. <laughs> so I, I well, don't they're know. Oh, for one. 
<laughs> but, no, I, I don't think uh, I don't think modern masters got worse or anything like that. I, I think like they were all pretty good. Um, I just think, you know, going forward, I, I don't think they need to kind of hamstring themselves by keeping it strictly modern masters. I mean, and they can still use these sets to print modern staples, but they also have the freedom to throw other things in, um, you know, fluster storm or something like that if they want yeah. to. But who's the audience then? I think at that point, like I think that gets a little bit tough. Like, you know how much iconic masters I bought? Zero, Th- three packs. I played one draft. Okay, uh, and there's cards in that set I wanted, right? But in modern masters, I knew that even if I didn't open cards I wanted, not, not just a draft environment, but I also knew that like I was going to hit on commons I needed to play modern decks and those sorts sure. of things. Sure. And I, I, you know, I, know, I could have opened cheap horizon canopies in iconic masters. That should have, that should have excited me, but that set doesn't excite me. So again, it could just be a product of that set in general. And they've admitted that set was probably not as iconic as it should have been. It was been. just really, there was just a lot of things wrong with it. But like, I think the question of who is this for is answered when you call the product modern masters or eternal masters sure. that, you know, masters 25 is is a little bit different because that product is for magic enthusiasts because it's a celebration of everything. But like, I, I don't know where they go from here. This if they start going that direction thematically, then I think you run into the from the vault problem. You know what I mean? You know, mo- masters, modern master sets. You didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, you worried about the cards you were printing, but you knew what the pool was. So the the you know you could you could go from there. Whereas this, if it, it could be everything, it could be a boat or it could be <laughs> goober. Uh, why? <laughs> Why? I, you know, we almost between, got away from it. It was between that or the poop word, and I went with Goober. So, <laughs> um, I think like they still leave it open. They're basically they're not saying that they they can't do Modern Masters in the future. So one of them may just be you know Modern Masters, you know twenty whatever uh, in the future. Which twenty XX? Yeah, twenty XX. Which is fine, um, but yeah. I I, I I like the change is what I'm getting to. I don't like the change is what I'm telling you. Okay. Um, I, I think that... Well, Morgan, I need you to tell us who won. Um, no one. I don't think anyone really won. Shut up. Mark. But no one lost. <laughs> so, like, there's that. Uh, I, I think it really depends on what kind of draft environment or limited environment, at the very least, that they in are, you know, ending up building with these uh, sets. I think having it themed is, is all right. Um, but if you are making bad limited formats that no one wants then like then it doesn't matter what theme you're going with and just like you know looking at the first couple of uh you know modern masters um 2013 2015 those those weren't the best limited formats uh, necessarily the first modern master was sweet i'll give you the 2015 was not as good right um so like I, i think the real impact has to be around how you get to play with the set in in the end. And I think that is true for all of these sort of reprint focused sets. If you want people to purchase the product and play with the product, um, it has to be a good environment to play in. And if they can consistently do that, even switching from a, you know, a format theme and going to something a little bit more uh, wide, then you'll be fine, but they have to nail that limited format. I, I don't know. I, I that definitely helps. Like if it's a good limited format, you're like more likely to draw me in. But I still think that like I felt comfortable just buying packs of Modern Masters while I was drafting it because I knew I was walking over with cards that I would want mm-hmm. all of the time. Like yo, know, you're talking about like oh cool, I could have like a path in this pack, you know, uh, or like whatever this rare is, or Inquisitions, or these things for this deck, you know, and. and the, the packs that are random things that are thematic, then, like, well, I'll just play a regular set for that. Like, they've got to keep it exciting. And, I, and I, we'll get some some Masters 25 spoilers. They're trying to do that, but I don't know. I think I think they lose their... They want they want their products to apply to everyone, which is a, a noble goal, and that's why you saw Iconic Masters in, like, Targets and stuff, and you'll see Masters 25 in the same places. But then the set didn't sell. And I feel like that might happen again. Maybe not with 25 because of the hype for it, but... Maybe, maybe, I mean, again, maybe Iconic Master is just the outlier. Maybe it was just so poorly released and spoiled so early before it released. Like, maybe it was just the perfect storm of trash. Yeah, but. I, I think it had more things going against it than just, like, just the cards in the set. Like, the, the timing of it was awkward because you had Unstable, you know, coming out. Which was a much mutter, much, much mutta. Much, 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 mutta, mutta, I don't know what I'm saying. Much better draft set. Yeah, but it, it falls in the similar trap that, like, uh, 
25 does. It's it's hyped. People have wanted it for so long. We haven't we haven't known what the set is though for three months before we bought it. Sure. So that I think there's a, I think there's something yeah. to that. So, so I, I think, think like I think Iconic was idea. just destined to fail because no one Wizards was going to have to try really hard for people to actually care about it, and they they or, didn't or not misname a set. Only, I don't know. Yeah, the only like <laughs> cool thing that they did with it was the pre-release where nobody knew what any of the cards were like were, were in the set and you kind of found out by yeah. seeing you know things kind of that would be on social media that, that, that was 25 that would have been sweet for this set that was the only cool yes. thing the, the rest of it yeah didn't really because hit. like if you look through that set it did have a lot of like playable modern cards um like it, it did have a lot sure. of stuff that was that was worth money and was valuable it had the, it reprinted the most expensive card in modern at the time which was rise of canopy like my, like mike said um and uh, it, it still has to be like something people are interested in to play, and I just don't think the limited format shook out to be anything spectacular. Um, we, we we cubed draft, with it. We just yeah, drafted, drafted the other night. It was it was all right. I typed a lot of Phantom Beasts. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations, Phantom Monsters. I don't know. Whatever, Phantom Beasts is also a card, isn't it? It's like the it bounces. Probable, I think. Probable. Yeah, whatever. So um, I think it all relies on how desperately people actually want to get people together and play with it, you know, play with the set. And I think that's true for um, anything that you are going to be printing that isn't a, a standard, you know, set. Um, so we'll see. But um, kind of interesting what, like, what themes they can do. Uh, I would I would have a hard time thinking about, like, what would, a, what would you know, would be a popular magic theme that they could, like, go with to supply an entire set and draft archetype around. Yeah, um, hopefully it doesn't go the way of like from the vaults where they just come up with these like, right, really random, really random things to like. I, I wish around. that they would just like masters of the gate. Watch. I wish that they would just stop doing this and just like really like invest in creating a cube product, a supplemental cube product. It's like they're beating around the bush with it. You know, it's like oh, we'll throw a couple things in here, like, a couple things in I, there. I, I'm fairly certain if they haven't done it now, they're not going to do it, or that product will be a desperation product when times are bad. Because, possibly because, but. But I think you do it, and I think how you do it is you print it as not legal, like I mean, not legal still, in other sets. It does. But it, I, it is constructive. It will literally cause people to not want need to buy things, and that is not really what they're in the business of. I know. I, I understand, but I think that they can they could do it and make it so all the the cards are still you know the same. They're just gold bordered, and then you can still customize it and put in blackboard cards to complement and and customize your cube. I understand it's still the same arguments, but um. I think that that's what they're going to... They're going to run out of themes, man. I don't know. There's How many a, draft formats can you really like make before you just run out? There's a really popular Aerosmith song that you should listen to. Uh, no, none of us are Aerosmith know, fans. Come on, going, man. Where are you going with this one? It's called Dream On. Come on now. Yeah. Oh, fine. Jeez. Wow. Fair enough. I think I said it was bad. I was waiting for somebody like, Janie got a gun? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Janie got a gun. <laughs> Walk this way. <laughs> the Run DMC mix because that that's yeah. sweet jam. Of course. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I just figured the other version like exists. <laughs> well, it's that without Run DMC. <laughs> I know it's really sad. <laughs> it's really sad. Every time I'm like, "Where's Run DMC?" And they never showed up. Run, <laughs> D- Run DMC never came. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. So uh, next up, speaking of uh, master sets, of course we have uh, Master Twenty Five previews that have already started, and um, I, I I I know that a lot of people have been uh, really 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 excited about it, um, and I think that uh, I, I I'm going to speak you know for my um, instance, I started playing Magic like competitively, uh, in Estrad like uh, block pretty much pretty much it was like m i think what 13 was the set like i was still playing when like new phyrexia scars block was still legal as well it's earlier than m13 i think i thought it was new phyrexia sure. that, that era sure it was like new phyrexia when Delver was dominant the core yeah. set and then like innistrad was about to come out anyway it's possible i could get wrong on that. i can't remember if it's i think it was m- m13 anyway that's when i started really like paying attention to cards i had cards like a little bit in like elementary school and a little bit in high school. Um, so I just don't have the history with a lot of the things that they've shown. Uh, I think that they are cool. And I think that this is way more iconic than actual iconic masters. Yeah. Uh, by a fair margin. And it's interesting. Uh, but I know that 
if I were to buy a pack of this, I would open it, and I know that in my mythic rare slot, or my rare slot slash mythic rare slot, I would open a Doomsday. I'd be very sad. I'd be a very sad boy. <laughs> um, and obviously, like you're going to have that with any set, realistically, for, for the most part. Comet Storm. Yeah, Channel, but... Comet Storm, but... Uh, <laughs> You can. Like, I I really think that there's only so many like really bad mythic slots before you're like I don't I don't I'd rather not. Uh, Five but anyway, dragons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, other than that, um, I, I think so far everything they're doing with the actual cards, the the printing of them, having the uh, set symbol in the text box, uh, some of the art choices that they've made with some of the cards, some of the new arts that we've seen, and. Um, just the overall flavor, I think, makes sense. What and um, I just, uh, I'm interested to see like how like the draft archetypes, you know, shake out. I love this set so far. So I know. So you, you, you're on one end. I'm kind of on the other end. Like I've been playing for a long time. I'm with Dave. I'm just in the middle. I just I, don't, like I'm, I am. I am tentatively excited, but yeah. also prepared to be disappointed. Uh, I'm just not. It is. If you do not have a history with the game of Magic, I don't know how excited you can realistically be. That is that is my question. Sure, sure. I I think like there's a lot there. I mean, even if you don't, you, you didn't play back then. You can, you know, you, you get to draft and you know play with cards from older sets that maybe you never played with before. I don't know. I, I'm I'm all about this. But uh, this I, is everything that I wanted to be. If I never so played with them before. Why yeah. would I be excited about playing with them theoretically? I don't know, maybe you've heard stories. Like maybe you're like, oh yeah, like all right. Well, Aldrin I mean, and Horde. I heard I've, that was like a card I've back heard in the day. like Flash Hulk stories and how miserable that was, and how like that was well, a bad format where that existed and extended. Uh, legacy. It was a legacy. No, it was extended. It was extended. What? No, it was it was legacy. It, it was, was extended. It was, Grand, it was Grand Prix Columbus. It was legacy. Hold on. Mm, Keep looking. I, I thought it was extended. It I thought like. It, it was flashes, whatever. It, yeah, it, it's a it format matter. that do, doesn't even exist anymore. So, but you so could do that in this limited or format. You can get Armageddon in this limited format, and I've heard such great stories about being Armageddon. I've experienced oh, I, being Armageddon, Armageddon in Cube. I Armageddon a lot of people back in the day. <laughs> so, <time>. like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I, I get that people talk about these cards uh, <laughs> with like I, varying I mean, I don't, degrees of like. I don't know what to tell you. Like Blood Moons in this set, Ensnaring Bridges in this set, Jaws. Like these are all cards that are, are not fun to play against. Yeah. So it's okay. Legacy. You got me. That, got him. That one tournament. I was beat legacy, the Dave. So. That one tournament. It, it was the legacy format that yeah. it blew up. Anyway. Um, <sighs> no, I want to hear it. <sighs> Mike's Mike's turned in this podcast into a competition. I know. Apparently. Um. Anyway, I don't say. Like, I don't want to say that it's. Uh, I, I'm like overly negative about it uh i just don't like i th- i think i feel like a lot of reason like people are excited are because of nostalgic reasons and not necessarily because so far from what we've seen a very small sample i will give you that right. the, the two days in looks here. particularly like good I, I i mean i don't know so you, you yourself said your biggest indicator of what a set is going to like one of these sets going to be good to you is a is the draft format so and we don't have that yet. You have no idea what it is. So Zero percentage. I think, I think you saying this doesn't look I am, good. I, I think you have. To, I think you have to withhold judgment because I do. if you're saying you're that's right. very important, then you just don't know what it is. And it could end up being bad. It certainly could. But I, I'm with Dave on this. Like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Like cards like Armageddon can be unfun sometimes. But like once in a draft format is is enough times to see it to be like okay. And I know that you've cast that card. I know that you've vintage cubed. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, so don't act like it's not something you've encountered. Like you like. Uh, but but see, like you can't evaluate this how you evaluate. No, no, no. no, no. Cube. But I'm just saying, like when you look at that card, I think you can look at that card just like you look at Cube. Though, like that card makes it generally the game unplayable for one player. Like the other player is probably well ahead, and they are getting you, and you cry. But you lose that game, and that's okay. I think like Magic. I think the cool thing about the set is that it's calling itself. Like when I saw Armageddon, like there's a lot of cards in there. I, I agree. Like Doomsday is a bad mythic and not a card you'd play even in limited. Like unless unless there's like a combo in here that you can assemble, which there might be. <laughs> um, but like when I look at a card like Armageddon, there's like, also brainstorm. So I, ma- I don't know. <laughs> right. Magic like this set could have shied away from what Magic was and is. It could have just showed us what Magic is, and by putting cards like Armageddon in there or like Dark Ritual, it's telling you like what Magic was and is. It is telling the story of what Magic like can be 
was yeah. and will be now. And I think that's a really cool combination. Like, I, I, yeah, it sucks if you get Armageddon and you that you feel bad about that draft, but like, you're not going to see it very often. You're really probably not going to draft this set that often. So I think it's like a cool thing to see every now and then. And I, uh, I don't know. I, I'm excited for what we've seen so far. That is. Plus, I'm sorry, the, the watermarks are, I, I know you already mentioned, but like, they're just so gorgeous. Like, and so many of these cards are so gorgeous. When they showed that blood moon with the dark symbol on it. Which, which is a moon. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it is it is gorgeous. But some of these symbols, like, really, really pop on these cards. I really like the Vindicate. Oh, yeah. I think it's just because of the clean text box, just destroy target permanent. And then you have the, uh, the Apocalypse, just the mask. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the and, and I think some of the, like, they've also done some cool things with the flavor text. Like, uh, we have Niv Mizzet, the Fire Mind, and they've brought back the sweet mathematical flavor text. You have things like Ensnaring Bridge, which still has the a quote from Gerard Capuchin in it, which I think is like, you know, that that's that's the thing they would shy away from with like a core set reprint or even a Masters reprint. They would be taking these names away. But. In this set, it's like no, we celebrate like you know the cap, you know not the captain, the uh, you know the, this crew member, of the weatherlight this year. Like I think I, that's, that's sweet. Yeah, they've done a really good job too. I've noticed with even with cards that have new art on them, um, they're keeping like the flavor from like whatever set that they're from. Like so, Zombify, for instance, is kind of like you know whatever card, um, but it's from Odyssey and it has like an Avon being right brought back okay, which I, I, is I, I bird, from some kind of know, bird man <laughs> yeah some <laughs> right. kind of bird man right um which is flavorful for odyssey because there are a lot of avon um, right in, in that i will say i disagree because they did living wish they didn't do that on and it makes me sad living wish they used the judge foil art and then they also changed the flavor text yeah right. yeah a, lo- a lot of the um older cards they're not able to use the, the original arts on um so or at the very least they'd have to pay a lot of money to use the original uh art on right but um some of these though i think are, are cards we haven't even seen ever like printed this way so i think like um was it the chroma angel of fury has the therese nielsen art on it oh it's so good the hannah ship uh navigator which has the, the also that gorgeous therese nielsen art on yeah. it that was only a judge promo which i think is awesome um we've got some commander cards being put into a like a, is it a set you can open packs of? Mm. Like this is this is a really good opportunity for them to reprint uh, Ash Barons. By the way, hopefully, oh yeah, that's in the set because that is a, a kind of a, a popper staple card that, that has cool. only seen one printing. And if there's any set that they could put it in, it'd be something like this. Um, for people to fight over which brainstorm art is uh, is the best, you do have the Chris Ron uh, Vintage Masters uh, brainstorm art, which is also a giant uh, card for I think vintage. Uh, either legacy um, or vintage, uh, the tournament they do, uh, eternal weekend oh, championships. Gotcha. The, the, yeah. Uh, so there's a, it's the, it's the, the, if you've seen the, the brain memes, it's the yeah, it, cosmic it's, brain, it's the worst art possibly ever. Like it, it's <laughs> I, literally a I, giant I, brain with lightning coming. I out disagree of it. being the worst. Art. I don't like the guy one, the guy with the, he's got his, the original one. Uh, yeah. I don't like that one. I mean, that's Christopher Rush, man. It's, it's better you than this, but can't, uh, you can't talk. Uh, that I like that art, Rush. but like, like obviously the Mercury Masks art would was what I would have wanted to see, but apparently it's super expensive to use and whatever. Sorry. Hey, the commissioner for a playmat yeah. and sleeves, whatever. Yeah. But even the one they used for what it was it Eternal Masters? I think was better than this. So I I don't know. What's the Eternal Masters one? Uh, it, oh, no. it, it looks kind of like the comic or the the Mercury Masks one. Yeah, no, I think I. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the uh, it's a dual deck one. Yeah, it's uh, uh it's in um. Is it versus Golgari? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's fine too. Yeah, I like that. One. I actually like that one a lot. It's. Uh, I just think like people probably like that uh, art, and it hasn't been on an actual card that you could physically own. So William Mur- Murai yeah. is who did. But I, I, I don't know. Like, if you like that one, that's fine. You can trade for all of mine. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think like you know, I, I understand that the nostalgia doesn't affect you like it does myself or Dave. But I think like from a value perspective, I think what we've seen so far, like obviously we have Jace as like the figurehead of the set and. Um, a pure recruiter, which LSV revealed the other day, which is sweet, and I think the new art for that is sweet. Um, and then there's have, been a lot of good guy, good memes of like you versus a guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> Those have been very good <laughs> for great. Imperial recruiter. Uh, but Rashad and Port though, that like, big rare is is a big deal. Rashad and Port with like that sweet mask symbol behind it, and actually like new art of like just a part of a plane we haven't seen in 15 this is, years. Uh, so this is the judge art. Yeah, no, 20 the, years. Like it's you know, judge I mean, promo art. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. it's still, yeah but you can see Mercadia in the back. Yeah, the like, background's so good. Ah, so I, I agree with you. I think that 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 being in the rare slot definitely affects like your the the box value that you're that you're looking at. And uh, you know what? Uh, you you may not need to have good value in the set for them to like be able to sell. But uh, again. It's not going to get if it's just nostalgia purposes, and you're going to be like losing value just by purchasing it. Then I think like uh, that it seems it just seems weird to me. I guess I don't know. I, I Maybe think, it doesn't matter. It I, probably just doesn't matter. I, I, that's where I'm sort of at with it. Like obviously, like it's it's expensive enough that I, I'm not going to just do infinite drafts of it. But like yeah. I think like enjoying something because of a nostalgia factor, because like it's a celebration of the game, is actually kind of enough for me. Like. Like Iconic Masters should have been the celebration of the game that this is by calling itself that. You know what I mean? Mm. Like this feel this is a true celebration of the game. The foils from this set are gonna look so awesome with those. Like I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to keep watch because any battle box foil I can replace with these that have those stamp on it <laughs> is gonna be oh my gosh, just probably gonna be pretty good. Oh man, I, I just I'll I don't know. There. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I, I wish you were too. I'm excited to see more of it. I, I want to hop on the train. Friend. I want to see like I want to see what you're going to actually be doing when you play with these cards. I don't know. Probably I'm, casting Doomsday a lot. Uh, <laughs> prob- yeah. prob- probably not. Probably not. Be trolling you with Ensnaring Bridge and Limited. Probably Real not. Fun. That's a mythic. Real fun. That's a mythic. How many of these drafts are you going to do? I'm going to open, open up Armageddon. And Armageddon is also Ensnaring mythic. Bridge How many of these drafts are you going draft? to do? Just one. I'm really good at this. <laughs> okay. That's not a good combo, though, right? Because then, like, you can't play. It it build is, up a lot of cards it is in your hand first because you can't cast them. <laughs> and then you can't play cards <laughs> anyway. Like, yes, these these things are things that you could do if you are incredibly lucky and open your sweet mythic at the beginning of your draft. Uh, or get incredibly even luckier by drafting the correct color of the mythic you open. Did Except you, for Zary Bridge, you can open that any time. I guess it works. Did you did you get coffee before you came here, or was that haterade? It's not haterade. <laughs> it's just, it's I'm of, just saying, like you can say these things, you can say these offhand it. things, and try to make uh, points. But like, you're not going to sell me. Be like, oh, you can open this mythic and then draft this archetype. But I'm not selling you on that. I'm not selling you on opening this mythic. I'm selling you on like I think just it's sweet okay things that to might be happen. Happy. I think yeah. I think it's cool to be just sold on an experience. I mean, there's plenty of things you spent that kind of money on, like thirty bucks to, for on an experience you were disappointed by, and at least you already like magic. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true, but. <clears throat> I mean, to go to a movie is going to cost, you know, if you go, with, if you take someone else with you and you buy any food or anything to drink, you're going to spend a similar amount to do this one draft. And if it's a bad movie, you'll have spent the same amount of time to hate it. And I guarantee you've done that many times in your life. Less than you might think. I, it's still enough that you can do one of these drafts and you can enjoy it. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying like, I, at this point, I'm not saying I won't, I won't enjoy it, but I'm not like drunk on the nostalgia like some people are. I, I'm not saying you guys are. It, just like, Oh, did you see Goblin War Drums, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> but I just think like not excited. About I just that don't want to no, be. What it's worth. <laughs> I just don't want to look at this set and be blinded by like nostalgia. I don't have like by blinded by, by nostalgia and let Watsy get away with not putting out. Okay. Like I, I agree with you on that, but I think you have, to, I, you, you have to be critical on the other side too. Where if you're too value obsessed with it, then you're never going to enjoy one of these products again. Sure, I, I agree with that. So, but it's I, a give and a take. It it is. I'm just like be be wary. Can we just talk about these rarity downshifts? <laughs> there's only been like so of course a couple, a few. Right, right. There's only been a few so. Can far. we talk about how hard it is from a distance to see what rarity a card is, unless you look at the bottom? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. A, little, that's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, you gotta um, look at that, that the bottom left corner. Uh, it's always gonna have yeah, that right, right next to the to the number C U R M. Because if you look at the if you just look at like mythic spoiler and you're looking at like the symbols, now nah, you can't tell between yeah, common and common. Common and common is real you bad. You can't tell me there's a difference there. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, Savannah Lions now common finally. No, it, you said now common, right? Yeah, common. So you said uncommon finally. Yeah. No, play that in your popper cubes or popper mm-hmm. format. Next uh, to all your other two ones, relevant one. that is yeah. Zo- zombie gladiator, undead gladiator, undead, undead gladiator. gladiator. Yeah. yeah, same difference. Uh, now, uh, now an uncommon downshifted from a rare. So Dave's gonna slot that into his oh, peasant yeah. cube. Oh yeah. Uh, that's, we, that's a card like I always liked too. It was like never like that good, but it's just sweet. Yeah, we've had some rarity upshifts. Uh, like we already talked about, we talked, we talked about bridge and chalice are now both yeah. mythic rares from rares, which is a concession to the limited format. Those cards are not very much. Uh, Armageddon goes up to uh, mythic rare as well. Uh, I think Armageddon yeah. would have been a mythic rare had it yeah. been printed. In this. A sure, lot of these yeah. sets haven't been printed with a set with a mythic rare for sure. And I think that like that card is definitely would have been a mythic. Chalice has Chalice has been a rare before. And, no, it, it it has. It was well. You're talking about because it, it could have been a mythic and a master set, yeah. right? Um, but you, no, you're right. Um, 
bridge could has never been had a chance nope. to be a mythic. I, I don't know if that it feels been like or a not. mythic to me. Anyway. That, does it? Okay, bridge, but yeah. but yeah. I mean, here's the thing: like Doomsday is not a good mythic, but I feel like that card's a mythic as well because that's a card that has no business being unlimited anyways and does something that no other cards really should do. So from that, if you're looking at what a mythic should be, Doomsday really does fit the bill. Yeah, it's Doom, Doom Day, Doom Day. Doom <laughs> Doom's Happy Doom Day, Doom Day everybody. There's only, only one. Uh, <laughs> it's my favorite day of the year. It's Doom, Doom Day. <laughs> to be fair, there probably is only one, right? Um, uh, yeah. Dan, because, I got you a Doom Day present. <laughs> it's Thanks. a bomb. That, oh, no. <laughs> that, does, uh, that does fit because it's a, a splashy card that has a big effect that no other card really does. So, yeah, even if that was printed in a standard set, it would definitely be Mythic yeah, for sure. So. Um, you want to talk? Can we talk about Duvian Horde for a second too? How the mighty have fallen. Oh yeah, that's a that's a rare or common uh, downshift. Uh, that that card. Was, I think it was it was uncommon, right? No, it was rare. It, it was rare. Oh no, it was it was a rare. Oh, alliances was one of those sets that didn't really have rares. Yeah, it? but it was yeah. it was it was, it was, a, like it was a chase card in yeah. alliances. It was a yeah. chase card where like force of will was ignored. It was just like yeah. gotta get these five fives. So yeah, as like as crappy as that card is, like by modern standards. Back in the day, like that, that is an iconic card. Oh yeah, I, it would have been agree. cool if they could have kept the the original yeah, art. Yeah, we, we know they. Can. We already talked about this, but yeah, the original art is kind of iconic, and I think like a lot of people that have been playing for a long time would tell you stories about that card about how you know. Yeah, that, that was you know, something that they made, made some mistakes. Maybe traded they away traded Force of Wills for yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so yeah, the cards. It's not good. Pillage not good. is now common too. Yeah, yeah. Pillage. They pillage revealed the sweet. same article, which is that's man, uh that's gonna when that hits popper. Yeah, you that, could, that that's popper card. You could do a uh, you could do Ponza. <laughs> You're getting there. Stop it. Get some help. No, no, that's <laughs> that's, that's a real thing. No, play I just Stone don't. Ran, you can play Stone Rain in, he, in pillage. He's been talking about playing it now. Like he's got this weird yeah, itch to go it. start destroying some lands. Yeah. I can. Uh, I, I would play it a modern because you could probably fit like an acidic slime in there, and it's not a very sinkholes on the popper uh, ban list, right? I have no idea. It's, it's never been printed as a comment on Magic, Magic Online. Online. So okay, so it is. It is. It's in that if you're same, going by the Magic Online, it, it's list, in that same oblivion that like red and blue elemental blasts are. Which when I first saw them, I thought they were commons, and no. I was really excited they fixed it, and they didn't. So nope. you Sorry. had a chance to make Pyroblast not a ten dollar card on Moto, but you didn't. <sighs> Oops. I think it's cool that they. Print Curse Catcher again, yeah. Like, not that I'll probably ever play that card, but it's never been reprinted. Right. Yeah. So it was just a, one of those random, like, expensive uncommons, only because of it's only been one. And, set. and you can you can put that in a set without having to like support Murpho. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's just not saying that you could print like a Lord of Atlantis, and it like it would be embarrassing. But right. Uh, yeah, you don't need you don't need <laughs> you, you might get um, Master of the Pearl Trident though. It's possible for, for the core set. It's possible. Not saying that's the most iconic card from that core set, but yeah, it's fair. all right. So, uh, but that's so far. I think is there only a week of spoilers for this, right? Or is it two? <laughs> I hope it's only a week because these things are coming out fast and furious. <laughs> I think we're already already fifty fifty plus cards in in two days. Yeah, so, so I mean, we're not really. If, I don't think it's going to go beyond a week. We'll yeah. So next week the. Palooza or no, no uh, Palooza. No, okay, yeah, sure. do Palooza Master. So you, oh, we probably Mad should Man? do a Palooza next week. We're not gonna have a lot. To talk no, about. no, we can definitely we, talk about. We can definitely if, talk if about the whole set of depth. We can definitely talk about yeah. it. But uh, nah, Palooza. nah, we can talk about the draft archetypes that we can see and all that. Yeah. Yeah. How fun? We can sit that one out. Me and Michael just how, we'll just how much over. fun like drafting <laughs> uh, mono black rats is sa, gonna be. Sa, 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 Speaking of gush, that'd be a sweet one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. mentioned rats. Uh, a common relentless rats. So you now do everybody who already had like if you had a uh, relentless rats EDH deck, you also have a popper deck. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> you did it. It paid off. You literally lucked yourself into a popper deck. That's so, that's pretty. Despite funny. your best efforts, perhaps you now have one. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> uh, all right, so let's move on to uh, competitive. Before we do so, I want to give it a shout out to uh, Comic Town. Uh, they are one of our lovely sponsors, and uh, this week they are going to have their standard uh, PPTQ. So. So uh, if you are trying to queue for that uh, sweet team RPTQ, uh, definitely come out to uh, a comic town and, uh, you know, uh, try your hand at casting some standard magic cards. Um, I believe it's going to be at noon uh, with an 11 a.m. sign up and the noon players meeting, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's, definitely that's Saturday. Correct? That is Saturday, uh, March 3rd. I know Mike and I uh, will likely be there. 
uh, trying to queue for this stupid RPTQ. Yep, I've top eight of the two PPTQs I've played in so far this season, so going for the hat trick, uh, if you will. So yeah, I, I got ninth last last Saturday. Yeah, so. that was on 0.7% break rate. It, it, it was, was it was, heartbreak. Was it a point, uh, zero, yeah, point seven. Yeah, it was yeah, point zero, zero, was it 0.07? Was it, it, was, it was less than one. <sighs> yeah, it was bad. So. Is, is, it bad. It made me sad inside. Um, so... So yeah, hopefully I can top eight this one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so uh, moving on to GP Memphis. Um, it was a total of 1,082 players, which is actually pretty high for a standard uh, a GP, it feels like. Uh, I kind of had the opposite take. Recently. I guess... Um, I'd have to look at some historic like, numbers for like, like the past few standard GPs, but I was thinking more of along the lines. Of, isn't that barely more than what the SCG Open had the week before for Modern? Sure is, but that's I modern. Think it was a thousand sixty. That's true, but modern SCG is never really been modern close is by to far numbers. the most popular format at this point in time. Yeah. You can't compare yeah, standard clearly. numbers to modern numbers. Clearly. The fact that this comes close to modern numbers for an Open is probably pretty good for standard because standard but has it, been garbage. But it's a GP. <laughs> Okay, GP, G, first of all, GPs are more expensive than modern opens. So, right. like, the fact that they got people, they conned people into paying this much to play standard means that either standard has gotten a lot better than what it used to be. Take take the price out of it. GPs are much, they're much more prestigious than an SCG open. I'm uh, sorry. I don't care what format it is. It doesn't they, matter they about are, prestige. It, it matters are, about you, price. Yeah, you can't take the price out of it. That, this is America. Price is everything. Money talks. Sure. Yeah, what are you talking for about? People, for certain people, yes. I'm just for saying. For a thousand people? I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a good argument in, in all honesty. Uh, the oh, fact Morgan side this time this is cool. I've gotten to just zigzag around the table. The, the fact that this Whatever. broke a thousand people when standard has been like actively terrible for so long is is impressive. That people like wanted to go out and play standard. In my opinion, uh, I mean we can't we can't even compare it to like standard like open numbers because there hasn't been any standard opens. <laughs> <laughs> they changed them all to team opens because they were afraid people weren't going to show up. And now you have a thou- over a thousand people wanting to play standard at a GP, which means it was seventy five dollars at the minimum to entry. So I, that's impressive. All right, costs more than your standard deck to, to <laughs> sign up, <laughs> depending on what you're playing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, more than likely, it's like one third of your standard deck, uh, judging by what did well at the tournament. So yeah, um, it was won by Tyler Schroeder. Uh, yeah, that's right. Schroeder uh, playing red green aggro um, and defeating uh, what was it? Uh, oh, snakes and ladders. <laughs> uh, snakes and ladders. Uh, <laughs> the salt like constrictor deck uh, piloted by Aaron Barish, who play, he who's playing Hadana's climb uh, in his deck. Yeah, called shot. And um, it was kind of cool to see you know sort of uh, a non. Scarab God deck be in first and second place because <laughs> even the salt right, list like, no has right no scarab god even the even the salt list not not playing a single scarab god uh, which is probably very relieving to some people because they can now find like decks that don't have to have scarab gods in them and, yeah um, you only need like four daylight rangers and like four walking ballistas well seeing as four daylight <laughs> rangers are currently the same price as almost one, one scarab god, god yeah i think that's okay yeah so you're saying i should probably sell my scarab god now no no i honestly can't act well, i'm not gonna play it i can't so. actively tell you to to, to uh to do that because the thing is we'll, we'll talk about this later but scarab god's not getting reprinted in the challenger decks so it's one of the mythic rares that stands to gain um uh, the most, in, in my opinion, there's a tenuous relationship to that though, because it gains for how long until until it becomes like close enough to summer that people go, well, isn't this card like rotating? Yeah, but we're in, we're barely outside of winter at this point in time. So hey, hey. <laughs> you watch your mouth, and it's not like you're far <laughs> removed from winter. I call, I, I I'm done with it. <laughs> it's not like uh, there are other Scarab God decks. I mean, we have Grixis Energy in third and fourth, and Blue Black Control in seventh and eighth. So Scarab God still doesn't play. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong I'm here. I'm playing it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's still like one of the best Magic cards in its format defining uh, at, at this point in time. But uh, yeah, I mean, there. Uh, let's let's take a look at the winning list. Let's take a look at Red Green Aggro. So this is something yeah. that has kind of been around since you know the 
uh, bannings of of energy. So, so you play this deck, right? Uh, I played something similar, not okay. this exact list. The, the list I played was bad. <laughs> it was this one is good. It was <laughs> it was, it was low. It was low to the ground. Uh, I wasn't playing like some of the like key cards that we we see here. Um, but I mean, this one it goes a little bit uh, goes a little bit bigger. Um, it has a little bit of a different sort of main deck choices um, than the list I was playing. Uh, mainly, it's not like I said; it's 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 not playing bad cards. Um, but we have you know Earthshaker Kenras, which um, are awesome, aggressive, low drop creatures that can become you know bigger threats later on in the game, which makes sense in this you know particular build, especially with you have you know Branch Walkers and Jade Light Rangers to you know dump those into the graveyard, maybe or what have you. I mean, let's just let's just look at all the creatures, right? Just Look at all the value just built into the creatures, right? right? Earth, Earthshaker Kenra, two for one. Merfolk Branchwalker can be a two for one, but yeah, you know, resilient Kenra, two for one. Jade Light Ranger, value maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe more than a two yeah, for one. Yeah, more than two for one. Pia you get two creatures off of that. Yep. Uh, Ronus Indestructible. That that one's probably like the the least value, <laughs> but it's still just like a three mana five five, right? Yeah. Rekindling Phoenix, hard to kill. Glory Binger, two for one, probably kills something. You know, at least when it comes in. So it's just yeah. like just the threat and like just the density of the threats in this deck is just. It's like how do you keep up? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I agree. Nah, uh, you you keep up by playing better removal spells than what this deck offers. That, that, it, that's, if it's like. Sorry. I don't know, like... I, I think, like, the deck is very good, it. but, yeah, I, I certainly think that, like, we've seen this deck go up and down, but I like this version of it a lot. I like I like going all in on your top-end flyers, um, and uh, I think the deck is fine, but I do say, like, how, like, you play by being by playing better removal than Struggle mm-hmm. to Survive and... Well, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, like, the deck's unbeatable, but, like, just looking at the creatures, it's just, like... Super soft. They all offer you something more than just attacking and blocking. You know, or like whether it's like you know two creatures or late game threats or what have you. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the look of this this list. Uh, he's he's got two uh, Death Guard scavengers in the sideboard, and I have to assume that card is is going to keep getting a little bit better just because uh, in the mirror in these decks it can be very very good because it cleans up you know um, it cleans up phoenixes it mm-hmm. cleans up all like the Kenras, Kenras. Yeah. Um, uh, if you you know not that we've seen really Godfrey's gift very much but it still is good against those it's also very serviceable against decks that want to go with the Scarab God because yep. you can start exiling creatures to set up for it so I, I have to assume that, that Death Guard uh, Scavenger is a card that stands to to be pretty well in the coming weeks oh for sure um and you know we we see that uh, the these kind of lists are going to you know rely a little bit on Carnage Tyrant uh, against more of the, uh, the controlling lists. Um, and the, I think the funniest card is playing a sideboard is then definitely the Azakan Archer because <laughs> uh, sometimes you just need a one four that kills a Bowmat Courier. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I know Mike, you mentioned the the struggle to survive, and it you know not not a great card on its own, but when you think about uh, this deck, really has. Very limited ways to get rid of a Scarab God. Yeah. Uh, and that is one way to kind of, I, I in mean, a roundabout way, get around, you know, get Sure, it, but, like, but it is inadvertently awkward because it's generally good against you, too. Like, it, it hurts your own graveyard when your deck is built on those synergies. So I'm, I'm still not going to give it a plus for playing it. Like, it plays it because it has to. Yeah, for not, sure. Not because yeah, it wants right, to. Right, right. Which we, we can talk about Ari Lax's list in a minute and talk about how uh, there's a, maybe another way to go about it. But we should talk a little more about this whole deck and deck because I want to talk about Hedonis Climb. Yeah, so Aaron Barish, uh, he's he's been working on a, a list uh, like this uh, with uh, in tandem with the uh, uh, Jaden Complarens actually. Oh, okay. And she had an article out on SCG Premium about this list today as Ooh, well. I didn't get a chance to read it. I'll take a um, but uh, this is sort of a, a list that is using the you know powerful card Winding Constrictor with Adonis Climb, which obviously cares about the number of plus one plus encounters you have on a uh, particular creature. Um, so it kind of looks like a regular like green black snake deck, and you're pretty much just splashing for Adonis Climb and some cards out of the sideboard. Negate specifically. Negate, yes, uh, very good you know sideboard card. Uh, but the the idea is like sometimes you're just going to be playing a regular like green black constrictor game, and sometimes you are going to be able to you know, go over the top with Hadana's climb, uh, flipping over to the uh, the uh, backside of it, and you know send your your giant guys a flying as it were. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool when you look at things like uh, obviously uh, 
your winding constrictors, good with all these, but walking ballista has a potential. Like if you go turn three, hit on climb, then turn four, you can put a counter. You can play a ballista for two, put a third counter on it, and flip. Um, things like Jaylight Ranger, you can cast, possibly put two counters on it, and then put a counter out with climb and flip. Um, Verdus Gear Hulk uh, <laughs> says build your own hit on climb yep. flip. Uh, and then even like Bristling Hydra, which I think is a card that's fallen way, way out of favor. But in when you look at all the blue black decks running around, when you can give it flying, <laughs> well, not just that. Like I think when you look at the, all the blue black that's in the format, it's the kind of card that before it was the kind of card where against like, some of these decks where if it landed, it was really really tough. I, I remember before we had um, Ixalan specifically, um, you that was like when you had the blue red control decks. Like that was the card where if you landed that against blue red control. That was pretty much close to the, to the game right there. So you know, having that card in here, and then having the, having the option sometimes to, um, <laughs> as you said, jump it in the air with hexproof and you know sort of ten your opponent out of nowhere or twelve or fourteen. That's pretty gross. Oh yeah, it's a real deal. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a uh, a pretty nifty list that you can um, you know look into potentially a building uh obviously you know three color mana base is uh can be a bit rocky but your blue splash is really really light so um it, it, i wouldn't expect it to be too bad but you know, your mileage may vary with these kind of uh these kind of builds i don't think we mentioned this um sorry i was kind of searching uh the internet's here but um Hadonis Climb seems like a pretty important card for beating like all these like random tokens decks that are running around. Yes, right. Like I definitely come can, up the board, like, can agree so, with that so much with all these little life flanking dudes. They uh, they they don't do so well with uh, with flyers typically. So if you can <laughs> if you can stick a threat through their you know mass you know uh, board removal, uh, then having something that can climb up a ladder and and fly down <laughs> can definitely be uh be pretty helpful. Yeah. Want to talk about Grixis Energy? Yeah, I mean three in the top eight. Obviously, that's a, a deck that Mike has been on for a while and has been, uh, you know, uh, doing fairly well with. Doing at least well in the top eight PBDQs. I don't know what that says, but I, I mean, it's something. <laughs> you can at least. I mean, you have some experience with the deck, so you can at least talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been so playing. Go ahead. Have you looked at these lists? Like, I, who do you, whose been. list do you like? Uh, so I, I will say the list I actually like the most is uh, Michael Cochran's. Um, okay. They all have so if you've looked at them, the the list have gone a couple of ways. You know, early in the format we had Brennan Akendios, which is a list that my version is still similar to, just because I have an unhealthy love of Rekindling Phoenix. Um, Michael Cochran still playing at least one of those. Uh, some of the lists are now incorporating things like Commit to, uh, to Memory, which is, was popular in the Blue Black decks, or Search for Iscanta. Uh But the card that I actually really like and I played in the main last week um, is Liliana Death's Majesty, yeah. uh, which Michael Cochran is playing a copy of, and really that card. Does a ton of work. Um, Morgan and I unfortunately had to play against each other in the PBTQ. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit too early. Um, we would have liked it uh, for you know round what four? Yeah, but we got it. In we got it round. No, we got it. it, it was was three. three. Was it? Yeah, we got it round three. Unfortunately, so it's uh, it's pretty awkward. But uh, you had a, a pretty good tick up yeah. uh, with the Liliana's Death Majesty, uh, which is middle of the top two. And make a zombie, yep. and you milled the Scarab God and Rekindling Phoenix, and the game was over. Yeah, I got to untap, tick down, get back Scarab <laughs> God, and then and then pay the mana to get back the Phoenix. It was yeah. pretty good. It's really but weird, I, weird how that worked. But I think like some of us are also playing like Ongroth, which I've played a bunch of already in this format. And I really like that card. But Liliana is just a, a value machine that yeah. allows you to you know if you've played any of these mirrors, like the the Grixis mirrors, and even like against Blue Black Control, they are resource logs. You are desperately trying to like stick something and. You're, it's a war of attrition, so you're looking for things. That's why they're going to cards like Search for Iskanta, co- you know, Commit. Uh, the things that will let you sort of either refill your hand or um, you know, get ahead later. So I like Liliana as a way to do that because it's a planeswalker with a ton of loyalty. Um, if you're playing Rekindling Phoenix and the Scarab God, you're putting a ton of pressure on, you know, plus you're playing Chandra as well, so you're putting a ton of pressure on Vraska's Contempts. Uh, and once you stick that card, like anything that's lying around in your graveyard, just like with the Scarab God, all of a sudden has a, is a threat to come back. And I think that's, it's pretty sweet. So, um, I think it's also important to like things like Whirler Virtuoso are still pretty good in the format. Mono red didn't have a good weekend, but you know, there's a lot of token strategies that are showing up. You know, Morgan played the green white, uh, token deck, uh, the PBTQ last week. Um, and deck, that deck is a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. And, and I think just it's like, wild having, having a bunch, you know, just like with the red green list where all, if all your creatures are essentially two for ones, you know what I mean? Um, between, um, 
you know, your Glintsu Siphoner, if you get to draw a card off of it, it's a two for one. Your World of Virtuoso lets you make a guy, it's two for one. If you're playing Gonti, it's a two for one. Um, yeah. We already talked about Rekindling Phoenix and Glorybringer. So, like, it's the same structure, but instead of playing red removal spells, <laughs> you get to play Vraska's Contempts, and, you know, it, it feels, I, to me, it feels a little bit better. Yeah, th- this is the first time I've really. I, I did watch a decent amount of coverage for the GP, and it's the first time you know in a while that I've really kind of been into to standard and kind of seeing what's going on there. It's really the first time, really anybody's seen much of standard in, in a while. But in any case, I mean, a- after watching this tournament, I can definitely see why Raskus Contempt is like such a highly valued card in the format. Just there's so many Scarab gods and Hazarets and Phoenixes and just. You just gotta, you just gotta get them off the board, and like that just is a clean answer. Right. The life gain is relevant. Like I saw that be relevant multiple times, um, and even just the mono red matchup. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, like whatever you play, like you have to take these cards into your consideration when you're when you're building your deck. Uh, Andrew Tenjum also played a little on his death match, a little on a death match to you. So yeah, but what do, yeah. what do you think of these versions that have Gaunti main deck? Uh, is that I, I something think you I like? think I think it's very good. I think it's just a play style thing for me. So the, a lot of these versions are coming more and more like the blue black control decks. Um, you, as you can see, they're playing more like you know either main deck torrential gear hulks and things like supreme wills and, and, and even essence scatters in the main. And I've kind of moved away from that a little bit. I, you know, I think the more you do that. Now, granted, the energy players here beat their blue black opponents, so that there's something to be said here. But in general, when you try to be, you know. Those, Try like, to be like a worse blue black. Well, I, I think like there was there was a really good match during the weekend where Brad Nelson was playing against. Um, oh, was that Tiago Saparito? Uh, yeah. yeah, and you saw like like so, you know, Nelson was on like blue black mid range, which was it was it was control, but it had more threats. Uh, and you saw Saparito like really be able to slowly pull away from that game because all of his draws were what his deck was supposed to do in in a mirror match, like in post-board games, whereas Nelson's still dealing with a shell of it. So if I'm going to play Grixis Energy, I'm going to play it like the deck that it is and then and board into those things. I think being a worse blue-black deck doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But I will say me. this. I will say this. Uh, blue-black mid-range did have a good showing, even though we didn't see any in the top eight. Sure. Um, we saw Brad Nelson, Corey Baumeister... Neither of them top eight of this GP, which was a little bit surprising because they've been on such a tear with standard GPs. Uh, but they both finished. I know Corey finished 11th. Um, Todd Anderson, who was also playing the same list, finished 20th. And Brett Nelson was 26th. So pretty good showing overall. Um, I mean, they had three players playing the, playing that, that deck. and it was a decent show, so I, I think that's still like a, a fine place to look. No, no, but I'm yeah, not it's in, wrong. in the straight blue black yeah. mirror, it might be disadvantaged, but it might have some advantages against other things. Now, the nice thing is, like we talk about standard getting a little bit better. Now we're starting to see sort of a meta game shift. So, like if if blue black is this thing, and people are trying to also like play decks that beat on the other decks, and mono red has this bad showing this week, well, mono red can definitely tune itself to to come in and you know you play this all low one drop build that just like looks at blue black control and says all right we're going under you like we're going to do this and then you have to shift again uh so i, I think that's kind of cool um honestly i think like the blue black decks don't do anything for me in these formats i think they're really tedious <laughs> and like but i'm glad they have a win condition <laughs> like yeah I, I you know as much as i don't like the scarab god i'm glad they get to actually like close out the game sometimes but yeah we saw Eric Froelich, um, top eighted here with with blue black control, uh, and there was another one in the top eight as well played by uh, Heath Vance, which yeah. I think they're pretty similar. Yeah, I think the, the biggest innovation you're seeing there, as we already mentioned, was um, was com- commit to memory, which was something you saw all over the place. I think in the GB this weekend, just because um, there are a lot of decks that were trying to use planeswalkers and other random permanents as ways to get around blue black. So things like the tokens deck that. Uh, once you land in something like an anointed procession, generally blue black colors are not something that can deal with a, a permanent like that. And and again, a lot of decks are trying to pressure Vraska's contempt. As good as that card is, you only have so many of them. Even though you're playing Gear Hulk, so there's that. But like you only have so many of them, so like you've got to be careful with what like if you have to hit a creature early on, then like they might resolve a planeswalker you need to deal with. Well, commit to memory lets you do all of it, and commit to memory also lets you. Like in a game where you feel like you are very, very like, sturdy, or you have like a ton, a ton of land, but you need to reset. 
it is an interesting mode, and Torrential Gear Hulk lets you do it where you get to untap with it. Yeah, I've gotten to do that before. It's pretty sweet. It's really gross. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that, that is the, the biggest innovation from those decks. But I want to see what the format does to go around it, because I do think there's some decks that are set up to take advantage of like them playing a ton of fairly expensive counter spells and spot removal. Like We're going back to four Disallows, a lot of Essence Scatters, and like things like four Vraska's Contempts. So we look at decks like what Morgan played last week that is playing like Servo Exhibition, Tell me how Servo Exhibition matches up against Essence Scatter and Vraska's Contempt. <laughs> feels like great. Sram's expertise. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> feels good, too. So, like, like those are those are where you... So, I think it's kind of cool because, like, yes, the Scarab God is overpowered, but we've seen Red. Uh, we thought a Hazret was still going to just crush the format. We saw Hazret almost be a no-show in the top 32. Yeah, I mean, I will say, so we had uh, John Rolf uh, was the highest finishing modern Red player at 10th. Um, he lost consecutive winning ins for the top eight. So, he was uh, i think 11 and 0 or something at one point uh and unfortunately for him he fell short but um you know he's somebody who's i think he's actually leading the constructed master oh, race in the uh for the pro tour but um yeah i mean his his list was a little interesting um he's playing four bomat carrier four fanatical firebrand as his one drops and that, again that makes sense if you're trying to go underneath yo Blue yeah. black, that's well, he's right. not playing like a ton of one drops. He's just he just has those. I, I think fanatical firebrand is something that is is a little interesting, right? Isn't um, the prowess guy is probably the more common one? Right? Uh, it just depends. Uh, the prowess guy is a lot more common when you're playing, especially for the mirror, because you want a way to be able to deal with hazards. But if yeah. you're not as worried about playing the mirror, yeah, then these are probably better. Yeah, I, I think like also something that kind of sticks out to me is his uh, he's playing grasping dunes instead of uh, sun scorched desert. In his list, yeah, I thought that was interesting. He also has um, a couple, a bunch of scavenger grounds. Yeah, so I mean, they, they typically play like a couple of those, right? But grasping dunes, I, th- I thought was interesting because it's like it's a way that red can actually kill an Adanto Vanguard, <laughs> 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 which otherwise I don't think you actually have a way to kill unless you're playing the um, the other the creature we talked about. Uh, so yeah, the Soulstorm Mage. Yeah, Soulstorm Mage yeah, mm-hmm. to do it. Soulstorm Mage is great because then you can, you can trick your opponents into paying for life, and then they it still dies and they forgot. But I don't know what I can never remember the name of that card. Soul I don't Scar know Rage. what it is. Yeah, Soul Scar Rage. Yeah, I, I don't understand why. But <laughs> sorry, everyone. Yeah, we're very disappointed, you, Dave. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, but no, I thought it was cool. Uh, can we talk about? Is there anything else in the topic you wanted to talk about? There was Marty Vehicles as well. Yeah, that, that deck has you know fallen out of favor, but yet someone still always finds a way. There's always yeah. one. <laughs> Marty Vehicles. It, uh, Finds a way. Finds it's a like way. it's like affinity and modern. There's always like one affinity deck. To be fair, they do have you know a lot of vehicles to get them there, so it makes sense. <laughs> um, I want to talk. I want to mention Naya Monsters at least a little bit because Arlax finished twelfth and wrote about this deck. Um, so Naya Monsters is a take on the the red green deck, but isn't all in on the um, the uh, Kenras. Uh, so instead, here you have. Branch Walkers, you have J-Light Rangers, you have Rekindling Phoenixes and Glory Bringers. You're also playing Servant of the Conduit as a Because you're yeah, a this bigger one goes deck. a little bit bigger, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do want to say, I've played this deck a little bit. I don't know if Servant's the right card for the deck. I think this one I actually might want the... Uh, Channeler? The Channeler, because you can do something cool with it. If you draw it late in the game, you can attack with a Rekindling Phoenix and then put the counters on the Phoenix if you if your opponent's on... You know, you're putting your opponent on no removal, and then make your 3-4, and then still get your Phoenix back. And I think that's kind of cool. Just saying. That's something. Um... But that might be, I don't know, something you don't want. Um, it's also playing a bunch of Chandras and a Johnny Unyielding. So there's our first white card. Yeah, I uh, totally forgot that that was a card. Yeah, I think the first time when, when a couple people saw this on Saturday night, we said, they were like, is that the, is that the Planeswalker deck one? Like, no, that's a real one. <laughs> that's Aether Revolt. Uh, that, that card is sweet for a couple reasons. Uh, one, in a deck like this where you have so many creatures and then enchantment-based removal because we're playing both ca- Cast Out and Thopter Arrest. The plus two on a Johnny Unyielding really does net you, you know, more cards than you might think. Um, but the minus two on it, where you get to exile a creature and they you know, they get to gain, like, you know, essentially it's a towards the plowshares, is really relevant in this format because yeah. you have, you know, well, all, the, all those and that we talked like, about. All these yeah. things we talked about. So, you know, it's for six mana. Like, if you if they play their five mana thing and you, play, you pay six mana for a Planeswalker that gets to exile that and stick around where they still have to deal with it, I think you're pretty fine with that. So... Uh, but instead of playing, like, Struggle to Survive, it just gets to play, like, flat out, like, Cast Out and Thopter Arrests. And it has Ixalan's Bindings in the sideboard, too. So, exile-based removal when you splash for white, which is kind of nice. 
I will say this, uh, just going back to an, uh, Johnny real quick. Uh, one thing that's nice about this is even if it eats a Raskus Contempt like immediately, it's going to get you some kind of value. So right. it's either going to get something, something off the board or it's going to net you prob- uh, at least a card probably. Um, so yeah, that, that that is pretty sweet and I definitely wasn't thinking of this card. Yeah, or, I, I think we've forgotten how big Standard is at the moment, but Standard's kind of huge. You know, we have three full blocks in Standard, right? So it... it it, there are cards that we're going to forget about. So, a Johnny and Yielding is definitely one where I was like, like, oh yeah, that card's in standard. <laughs> what, do, what do you think about um, just the removal suite? So I know you kind of talked about the, the Thopter Rest and the Cast Out, and then it even has two Ixalans Binding in the sideboard. Like, It's kind of an interesting mix there. You think you just want to not have a bunch of the same thing? or? So, uh, I will say Lax wrote about it this week, and um, he talked about how in game one you just want to be flexible with it, so like cast out, being able to cycle it, because it's also playing four Magmas Rays game one, so it's it's trying to prepare for creature matchups more more than that. So sometimes just a lot of exile effects. It's true. So you but you sometimes you don't have time for cast out, but like in the in the decks where like the things they have like ancestral uh, you know, or ancestral I'm sorry um, anointed procession and things like that, then you want either excellence binding or both. Uh, so it just depends. You know, cast out. If you're gonna play four mana removal in your in your deck like that, that is somewhat situational. Then I think cast out makes sense in the main because of the cycling. Because you don't always want it. All right. Um, else? I mean, yeah. there's, there's a ton of. I, I guess like, it, it seemed like there were a lot of tokens decks, but, and there, maybe there were in the tournament. It looks like there there weren't that many in the top thirty two. Um, but they were yeah definitely around. Yeah, we had Abzan tokens finished. Uh, so Sam Sam Party took that to a nineteenth place finish. You had Blue White Drake Haven. Blue White Drake Haven. Yeah, that was a that uh, was a thing before. Actually, you saw that in, in a really cool match where the they were talking about how so essentially his blue black opponent had the the uh, the blue elder dinosaur. Yeah, Nezahal. Yeah, whatever. Nezi? Uh, Nezzy, that uh, it, it whenever your opponent plays a non-creature spell, they get to draw a card, right? Mm. So they were going to deck each other. So they were trying like so the blue eye player ended up like cycling enough to that he was the one who decked, but there was like a line where you could take where you just try to cast he he could he tried to resolve a uh, band of sarcophagus and had he managed to resolve that he could have probably decked his opponent. Just making him draw cards. Just, well, there. because he could just keep, he had a bunch of re- renewed face, all his renewed face from the graveyard, so he could just play them to take the attacks from the Nezi, and each time just get him to draw a card. And I thought that was one of the weirdest like interactions I've ever seen. So because you know you just had to draw the card. That's funny. I do want to mention real quick uh, Jack Kiefer's uh, white black deck, trying to keep the dream alive um, for for poor Ixalan tribal. <laughs> so. Yeah, so he's playing like a, a white black vampires deck here. We got a uh, Legion Lieutenant, you know, Dust Legion Zealot. Is this Martyr of Dusk? Oh, yeah. Martyr of Dusk. Even got uh, Queen's Commission, <laughs> his way to make tokens, <laughs> Call the Feast. Well, yeah, you got to make lifeling tokens for your Crested Sunmares, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was getting to that. Crested Sunmare. Oh, man. Uh,. Yeah, this is this was definitely kind of wacky. Uh, he was on camera early on in the tournament, and um, I think he beat Todd Anderson pretty pretty soundly. And um, definitely an interesting list. I mean, I mean, and, and I guess this is kind of his own brew that he brought. So, props to him for finishing top thirty two there. Yeah, I know uh, Sam Black did not finish in the top thirty two, but he was playing a really strange like black white deck as well. He was playing like a Turbo City's blessing, yeah, like yeah, aggro. Interesting. He's playing like the zero three for one mana that gets plus three plus zero when he has uh, his blessing. Stubborn and Snubhorn. Yeah. Yep. He was doing some gross stuff though. Yeah, he was that, also playing the, the pump spell. Um, I, I I can't name of these draft comps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I know what you're talking about. Where they get plus two plus one, but if you have the city's blessing, blessing, you get yeah. plus two plus two, and they have vigilance. I think. Yeah. So the plus two plus two when you have that many tokens and you get rescinded. It's real gross. So, yeah, the, the, we, there were a couple of times he was on camera that did that. I'm, it's sad he didn't top 32, but you know, he's trying to push the format a different direction. You know what? Like, Sam Black is, is one of those those deck builders, and we don't really have – I feel like we don't have a lot of them now, but he's not afraid to take uh, a theme 
or like a mechanic and just push it as far as it could go Mm -hmm. just like just to see what we can do um and you know he's a player obviously that has played some kind of weird decks like he, he likes playing lantern uh back when death shadow zoo was a thing um before that was really super popular he was kind of playing that deck um he's playing a million different decks over the years but uh he's definitely someone to look to and, and i think like the the teams that he's been on you know on the pro tour uh, really benefit from having him around because he he will experiment with things and he'll you know take things he'll he'll he'll, th- he'll think of cards that like nobody will think of you know what i mean um it's kind of sad that we don't have his deck list here but uh hopefully he'll write about it yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, I also like that uh, there there is kind of a, a budget option that, that top thirty two to thirty first. Uh, it's Christopher uh, McMahon playing Mono Black Aggro. It's only seventy eight dollars. So nice for a, a deck that's a you know a little bit off the beaten path, but uh, it's still pretty affordable. Like for the low go. price of two challenger decks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know that's uh, another interesting option you can kind of take a look at. Also, um, uh, this is a, a list that eighteenth place, the Jund list. I know that Ari Lax tweeted about this list a little bit uh, and said that this this list is something that you should take a look at. It's a, it was the end of his article too. He yeah, again. like this this guy you know might be on the uh, the right path to uh, to look at this format. It's uh, um, Craig Rocco is the uh, the the player of the uh, the aforementioned list. But um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff going on in, in here. If you want to see something that's kind of uh, Kind of fun uh, and, and mid rangey uh, as something that you can do. Again, another list that's playing Survey of the Conduit. I think you're right. I think that a lot of people might be overlooking, um, which we call it, the Channeler. I forget the actual name of the Channel card. Initiate. Yeah, I think a lot of people might be overlooking yeah, that. Yeah, I think I agree with that too. Just like look at the Naya deck that had no chance, no ways to have any sort of additional energy for any reason. Like if yeah. you're playing Siphoner, at least it makes sense because if you draw late ones, it can it's translate true. to a card. It's but true. like if you're not playing energy at all, then like the Initiate at least becomes a three four. Yeah, uh, specifically for Naya. This I do see that this is obviously play, as obviously playing like yeah, Siphoner. If you're playing and Siphoner, hubs. then I think it's better to play because again, you can just draw it off the top and turn on a Siphoner for the next turn. So. Yeah, that's not bad. But, but it's pretty. He, he goes, his servant, go here. And then the siphoner's like, <laughs> that energy was delicious. Give me, give me some of that Red Bull you came in the battlefield with. <laughs> um, but yeah, so another kind of uh, interesting, you know, list that uh, you know might might have some uh, might have some legs. So, I mean, I think the creatures have a lot of legs. Probably, probably. Um, oh, mo- oh, if not, you know, all of them, pretty much. I don't think we have any, you know, legless creatures uh, in this deck, in particularly. Very uh, few, okay. very few uh, in in the standard format at this point in time, I believe. We have snakes. We have snakes. It's true. Uh, snakes. Snakes. But no, like no, no real good oozes or anything I really like that. Thought for a second, Dave said we had snacks, and I was like, did you bring like orange slices and Capri Suns <laughs> for the podcast? <laughs> Um, so before we jump to our question of the week, I, I do want to give a quick shout out to BCW Supplies. If you haven't seen, they are giving a, um, uh, in conjunction with Team BCW, are giving a 10% uh, discount off of their orders. You can check out more information on that by visiting uh, the BCW, the Team BCW uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, as well as BCW Supplies So on Facebook. So definitely do a quick search for that. Get some awesome uh, and, uh, you know, uh, cheaper uh, BCW uh, you know, products because they're... Uh, pretty great um so question of the week uh as we said um you know kind of alluded to challenger decks are our thing we know deck lists and everything like that and uh they they, they didn't disappoint like to, to be perfectly uh honest with you these are some of the most impressive pre-constructed decks that watsi has released and they come in four different varieties, uh, four different flavors, as you uh, as four it were. Extreme flavor. Uh, you have cherry, which is mono red uh, uh, aggro, and then you have that's not fla- no, it's like wild cherry. Okay, wild, wild cherry. Um, and then you have is that the I, like red zone? Yes, uh, absolutely. Like the, like the Mountain Dew red zone. You have uh, two flavors of the bomb pop. Uh, no cherry, but just the the, the lemon in the the blue. I don't know. Uh, in blue, blue white. Uh, Electric gift, ice, not gift. Blue white. Um, uh, approach. Uh, I don't know what green and black are. Uh, apple and the bl- licorice. I guess I don't. Know. Chocolate <laughs> thunder that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. Uh, but you have uh, a green black constrictor deck, and then you have uh, Mardu vehicles. Uh, 
I, I don't know. Black is vehicle a, rush. Oh, yeah, black is a hard flavor to like. Actually, vehicle rush sounds like a cool extreme flavor. That does. That, that, that was like correctly. That's a limited edition Mountain Dew when you know they're doing the Daytona 500. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wouldn't be like the Daytona 500. It'd be like you know some, some I don't dune know. buggy like race. I'm or something pretty like sure that, that Mountain Dew is no, more closely associated yeah, no, with Daytona dune, 500. Dune buggy races are some of the Red Bull sponsors. Yeah. Uh, Daytona okay. 500 is something that Mountain Dew definitely <laughs> sponsors. Uh, have you seen the Ballad of Ricky America. Bobby? Maybe I'm thinking of like old old Mountain Dew because they the Red Bull kind of took took Mountain Dew's yeah. place and they like. Kind of outlier sports they, or whatever. They won the caffeine wars. They had more caffeine. <laughs> they missed true. a chance to name their, their their theme deck "Cruise in the World," and I'm just saying they could have done <laughs> they it. They could have. It's true. So you could walk into the store and be like, "Give me one of those cruisins." Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, but the, these decks are are you know chock full of uh, competitive cards, mythic you know level cards. We have yo know, multiple hearts of Kieran in the we vehicle deck, huh? What up, yo? <laughs> we have We're talking about multiple hearts of Kieran. Four the, heart of Kieran. The whole set. Uh, we have, you know, Hazards and, and Chandra's being printed. Uh, walking Ballistas. You don't get four Hazards. No, you do not, you get, do four not hazards, get four Hazards. Which, of course, is the correct number, but you do not get four of them, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but needless to say, these are uh, a decks that you could take to, like, uh, an F&M and not, not be embarrassed. Uh, you couldn't really say that about, like, Ved decks, those those were still like they tried, but they were still really bad. Or any of the other intro decks. They had like the random like tokens deck, right? For that modern. Was, that was specifically a like a deck that was cultivated to be that's the only, I think, real exception to this. Yeah. yeah. And even like even that, even that event deck in all honesty, is still pretty embarrassing as far as that's concerned. You do not have any good your mana base isn't good. And the mana bases in here aren't like fantastic. They're probably like that that red mana base is Actually, the, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you got me there. But any of the multicolor mana bases are probably your weak point. Um, in all honesty, you don't see a lot of like the Kaladesh fast lands or as many as you would want, which is four. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the the vehicle rush deck gets four spire of industry though, which is pretty. Sweet. That, yes, that is, that is very true. Um, which you definitely need for for uh, for that deck. Um, to get away with being a, a three color deck, right? Um, but. Uh, there was an article written by uh, Chase Andres um, about sort of the implications that this might potentially have and kind of the, the, the cost in uh, upgrading these decks. And if uh, you um, can, you should definitely go in and read up on it. It's, it is fairly interesting. It is on the premium side of Star City Games. Um, but it is uh, definitely worth your, your time and looking at, especially if um, you are interested in these I think one of the the biggest takeaways from that uh, article on honesty is that you are lowering the floor for standard and you're going to get a likely a lot more people interested in it just because the investment's not that bad. You know, you don't have to pay $300 for a deck. You can get one of these and pay maybe 50 to a hundred dollars depending on what deck you're getting and what upgrades you're wanting to make to it and really have something that's fairly competitive um, and I think that is truly appealing. Um, so I guess really the, the question that I kind of want to pose to you guys is, do you think that um, with the, the, the release of these, when, when they come out, if they are truly going to drive more standard interest? I, I mean, I, I think I think the answer to that is, is probably yes. I know there's a lot of people who may have dipped out of standard who will look at these and go, uh, assuming they're readily available, right? right? Assuming that these are not... Yo, know, some jerk comes in and buys all the red ones, so he has four hazards and four Chandras, right? But I know plenty of people that would have literally, you know, would have walked in and bought like the old event decks, even um, just because they wanted to mess around. I think that used to be a joke too, like was the event deck challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Where you would buy an event deck and see if you could do F and M with it. Um, and I, so I think definitively these will. And I think these also not not only are they cheaper to make a full deck out of, but knowing that like like so if you wanted to get the standard right now, right? Look at all the cards you would have to buy from Kaladesh and even Ammo and Ket that aren't going to be in standard for very long, mm. right? Like, you know, Kaladesh is, you know, I know it's, I know you, we already said this before, it's already February, but like, you're, if you've, if you've been playing with your Kaladesh cards since Kaladesh was printed, well then cool, you're coming up on two years, you know what I mean? But that is not true for the person who's going to get, you know, another eight months out of it, right? So these things are ways to make sure that those are more affordable in the first place. Um, and also, you think I'm crazy on this? 
You think I'm wrong on this rotation thing? No, I I just I was meaning to to look it up again, and I hadn't. Yeah, fair enough. I, I was understanding this. He's like, "What's in standard?" Huh? Um, but I think the cool thing about this then is knowing that if they're going to keep doing. To this, be fair, I do want to give props to uh, what's in standard dot com. Very helpful. Oh no, no, they they got that sweet that sweet URL. It's but, very, it's very good. But like knowing that like one that you can just do this, then it gets rid of some of that fear because these cards aren't that expensive. Like looking at the black green counters one, you're talking about there's literally three Verdurus gear hulks in that deck, and when that and when that card first came out, like those were ten bucks a pop. You know what I mean? Or the red, you know, the red one where you're getting a Chandra, and that's literally currently the price of the entire deck. So um, that helps that a little bit, and also it also helps lower the price on certain cards in standard. You know what I mean? You already saw the price of Hazards and Chandras come down a little bit because they announced these decks, and they're even released to the end of April, right? Mm-hmm. So. It's at the end of April, right? Not, not March. These come out April sixth. Okay, so end of March, beginning of April. April. Sorry, but like still, like we're talking about a, you know, a month away, and the card price is already affected by this. Now there is an inverse of this. We've seen things like the Scarab God has jumped about ten bucks this week because it's good and standard, and it wasn't in these decks. So you'll see that inverse happen too. But I think there's everywhere you look at this, it makes standard a little bit more affordable. It's definitely more accessible for people who've been out of the game for a little bit, uh, and these decks look competitive and fun. They don't look like the normal pre-con decks where you go, okay, this is trash. I get it. I remember the first pre-con deck I ever had, which was the Spike Colony deck from Stronghold. <laughs> right? We, we, had, we had bought stuff before that, but like my mom was like, I got you guys a pre-con deck. And I was like, cool. And I was like, oh, I get it. They all have counters. That was it. That was the whole yeah. like that was the whole thing. The, the, I think the first one I ever got was the Tempest one. It was like the red one. It was like, I don't remember what it was called. Wrath's Fury or something. Oh man, did it have like a was it? It had like uh, a furnace of wrath in it. And, uh, <laughs> Wrathy dragon, like a bunch of like lightning blasts. It was nice. really bad. Um, I know my, my brother got also got a stronghold one. He got the one that had the mind warper in it. The that's the the black creature comes oh, to yeah. play with three counters yeah. on it. Yeah, it was really bad. But anyways, yeah. uh, so like to to look at these and say like, oh, these look complex. These look you know these aren't for be- beginners specifically. They're, these are the training wheels are off for these decks. They're real. That feels really good. I think like w- one thing, um, if if you're wondering about you know the value of the cards and how this is going to affect things, um, one thing that Chaz Andres kind of talked about was you know look at the cards that are included as four ofs, and like those are the ones that are, are that are probably going to be hit the most uh, because people aren't going to need to buy any more. Whereas you look at something like Chandra, right? It only comes with one, so like if you want to. You know, upgrade the deck or make it competitive. You're still gonna have to get a couple more Chandras at least, or like Hazra, whatever. So those those cards probably aren't gonna be impacted as much because there's still gonna be demand for them out there. Um, whereas you know, you look at something else like uh, I don't know, still just sticking with the red deck. You know, Bomac Carrier it comes with four. You don't need to get any right. more Bomac Carriers, um, and, and so forth. And you can look at any of the decks. You know, for for hard you know hard of Kieran being four of in the deck. That's probably going to really just plummet that the price on that card. Yeah, it was already low. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I I'm not as like concerned with all that stuff. I mean, I'm not really a, a finance guy. I, I think it's cool that these are going to be available and like you can realistically, you know, if you're not even somebody that plays in like a lot of FNMs, you know what I mean? Like like if you maybe you don't even really own many new cards, which Personally, I don't have that many like standard cards right now because I just haven't played standard in a while. Um, you know, if I just wanted to have like a you know a fun time at FNM, I could probably pick one of these up and like actually do halfway decent with it. Uh, I wouldn't expect to win or anything like you know undefeated or what or whatever, but um, you could go and not just be completely embarrassed. <laughs> um, and for thirty bucks, I mean, it's not bad. No, so, I, I agree. Yeah. Right, is there anything like? Should we be upset at all that they're doing this? Like, I owned, I own ha- Hazards and Chandras. I'm not upset that my cards might be worthless, but maybe I should be. So, I mean, some people, uh, some people are going to be. That's just you know unavoidable. But I think like you just have to know that this could happen, right? They could just reprint sure. cards at any time. Uh, so um, a lot of the money cards that are they are reprinting uh are weird because they are also really good modern cards or at least playable modern cards hazaret is a playable modern card I've been playing me some hazaret's modern recently it's very uh, good uh walking, walking ballista, ballista yeah. playable modern fatal card push. fatal push 
Uh, even Chandra, Torch of Defiance, is sometimes played. Unclaimed territory. There's three of them in one of the decks. Yeah. That's a $5 card currently because of modern only. Um, so I don't think in in this particular case, like there are a lot of cards that will still hold their value somewhat, even if they do plummet. Um, that's, a, that's fair. But... I don't know this could be an issue, true, but yeah, this might be more of like a sore subject, like in, in, in the future when they do this, depending on like what the economy of magic looks like at that point in time. Uh, but overall, like I don't care. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess because like maybe it's just me. Like I, I don't play magic to like make money off my cards. You know right. what I mean? Like uh, the cards that I have, I, I get to play. I, I typically like. Even when I get standard cards, I don't even like. I just hold on to them, you know. I just have stuff, and like maybe that's maybe that, maybe I'm just an idiot for doing that. I don't know, but like I just I don't do it. But yeah, I don't have the space to keep everything I I had. Like I, yeah. I, I I cycle in and out of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's you know a lot of the time it's like you have to you know to to, to be truthfully you know you have to to be honest you have to sell at the right time for standard cards. Yeah, and standard can be really volatile. That you know. Um, one week your your deck could be could be good, and the next one you know it, it might not be as uh, as viable. So, um, I think more than anything, you probably want to have access to potentially multiple standard decks more than any other format. Um, so that that's also a thing. Yeah, that's fair. So if this makes that easier to do, like that's fine too. But I don't know. I, I spent a lot of my time and energy uh, investing in into modern staples so recently picked up some jace the mind sculptors and you know yeah <laughs> i could trade those for a whole standard decks probably but, you know, <laughs> yeah pro- probably <laughs> definitely actually you could de- certainly trade one for a challenger deck and then the cards to turn it into a standard deck yeah there you go, there you go. <laughs> but uh I, I think this is a a good move i think that it's really interesting to see them really try to make a sealed product uh like a, an actual deck that is good you know that's worth your time to look at uh and not just like a joke it makes sense and it you know uh it also makes sense that most of the cards that are in these are ones that are rotating this year yes so you're not seeing staples from like exelon i guess except for the land that you talked no, about but like, you're not, no you're not seeing like rekindling phoenix in here <laughs> no. right they want you to keep buying those sets right, right. and that that, actually, and that makes sense from their yes. perspective why right. would they i mean i think those? especially if it's still being drafted too like if you want cards from those ones go draft right i, I think that's their, their mantra on that right so, so yeah. it, it makes sense i think like going forward if this is something they're going to continue to do they're going to have to make sure that the power levels and the cards are spread out like you can't just have, you know, all rares and mythics be the only cards that are playable because you're not going to be able to do this kind of thing right. going forward. You know what I mean? So, I, and again, I think I think the timing of this is important. You'll see it in fairly mature standard formats too. Like they're not going to coincide with a release right after rotation. <laughs> yeah. So, but I like that you're doing it. Um, I have no problem with that. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's of all the like supplemental things that they've released, this is one that I can definitely get behind. Yeah, um, and th- there is the uh, you know the uh, fallout of like obviously cards are going to go down, but certain cards that you loan might just go up. <laughs> so there's there's also that if you you know worried about value, um, and I don't know standard uh, standards are a wild market, and it's been really wild with bannings and stuff like that. So you can never really be certain. Like you can never really have a safe bet if you're like trying to invest in like modern state, uh, not modern, but a uh, standard staples in all well, honesty, it's it, not where like the big money is anyway. It, if you want to play the financial game, like there are other, you know, f- formats to really play that game in. And again, for, for people that are, you know, maybe newer to the game or want to branch out into competitive play, this is a great starting point. Yeah. Like, Mike and I just talked about their crappy, you know, wrath block decks that we started out with, which were not playable at all. Like that was and, not a good uh, starting. No point. staples in them whatsoever. Right. I got basic lands out of it. That was right. Sweet. There you go. So, I mean, compare that. I mean, that's obviously was a very long time ago, but uh, you have a much better jumping off point if you start with one of these. Yes. You know what I mean? So. A hundred percent. So I think we're all in the that these this is a good thing, and um, I, I hope that it's something that they, they keep doing. Uh, I think you you might run into the issue of like supply, 
uh, obviously that that sometimes they run into with like certain commander decks and stuff like that. So you have to make sure that the uh, the the supply is good. But yeah, and these are going to be in big box stores as well, right? Uh, I believe. I, I don't know about that, but I think probably. I heard that, but I can't confirm it. I yeah. have to look. I mean, you have like master sets showing up in big box stores, so like this being in a big box store shouldn't be surprising the at all. Will be in a big lot store. Probably not. They probably won't make it to big lots. No, not all big surplus. Big fox store. Uh, they probably don't put, you know sell magic cards. Big Maybe. fox store. Uh, no. Oversized no. mop store. No, probably just mops. Hmm. Just uh, big har- box. Hardy Crocs store. Mainly just Crocs. Oh, and Croc pots? Uh, no, just the just the 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 Man, shoe. That seems like a. That what is a Croc? Is it a shoe? Is it what a about sandal? Crocodiles. The, I think it's the, a, I think it's a cl- it's a trashy clock. <laughs> <laughs> trashy clock. <laughs> That's true. It's very similar to what happens in my toilet. That's true. <laughs> oh, no, thank I'm going to hate mail. You know what? I'm no, not going to apologize to Crocs. I'm not yeah. going to do it. No, thank you. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't apologize to Crocs either. <laughs> All right, so wrap up. Uh, this weekend we have uh, the 2017 Magic Online Championship, which is going to be uh, Rivals Block Draft and Modern, and then SCG. Dave, say it. Worcester. <laughs> Worcester. <laughs> he, Not he Worcester. Put his, he put his little, little yeah, come Boston on. Give, 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 Come on, give the fans what they want. No. No. They don't oh want wow, it. they don't want it. <laughs> wow, wow. All I'm right, not, I'm much more interested in watching the box. Yeah, I mean, it, le- legacy is whatever. Legacy's whatever. It's not really our thing. It's not really our thing. I'm guessing some kind of Delver deck will win. <laughs> it's probably that's what Delver doesn't uh, like. I'm Something guessing, with Deathrite Shaman, isn't that weird? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Deathrite Shaman. Uh, Leovold, Leovold will be in the winning deck uh, again. Something with Deathrite Shaman, correct? Yeah, but this will be the first large. Well, I guess not a large tournament because it's not that many players in it. But uh, a first, like I guess, big time tournament yes, with, with the uh, modern unbannings, correct? So uh, we'll uh, maybe maybe see the the full uh, a, a, a bigger idea of uh, the unbanning of Jason Blood Radoff has done to the format. If anything, and, and I can tell you, Corey Burkhart's playing in this. Yeah, great. You know what he's playing? He's playing. He's playing that blue junk, as he, he as he likes to call it sometimes. I'm guessing he's going to have more than a couple Jace Mind Sculptors it's in his deck. Sh- yeah, man. Boy, Reed like Duke's that. playing. He's gonna, I'm guessing he's going to have Blood Radoff. Probably going to have Blood Radoff on his deck. <laughs> <laughs> then there are a lot of other players that, that you, you would know. Um, yeah. Josh Chardelet and Steve Rubin. Uh, just going down the list here. Marcio Calvallo, Tiago Separito, Gab Nassif, Sam Party, Craig hey. Wesco. It's uh, just, uh, you yeah. know. There are other players, too. I don't, I'm not going to go down the whole list. But Hopefully, Gabriel Nassif doesn't, you know, attack it to uh, Dryad Arbor. <laughs> Uh yeah, what does it do on Magic Online? Does it put uh, it forward into it's the a creature? Creatures. It's a creature. Yeah, there we go. Officially, yeah, I I do know that. So it's probably uh, yeah. Again, if he had it shuffled into a screw, and whatever, I want to do this. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be what's happening over the weekend. So we'll we'll be back next week to talk a little bit about both of those things more than likely. Um, hey, maybe a moderated uh, mod catcher will uh will show up. We haven't seen that deck Ooh. in a while. I miss Ooh. it. But we get a a modern classic. Yeah, too. So that'll be Sick. cool to see as well. What's up? Uh, I'm gonna plug my other thing. Oh, yep. Hey, so if you like this and you like me, Morgan will be there too, but not on a mic this time. No. Uh, I'm doing another podcast. Uh, this time about baseball. And if a bunch of you just went, what? Like, yeah, I, I get it. You may not like sports, and that's fine. Uh, it, it tends to be a very specific demographic that is like a huge Magic fan and also a huge baseball fan, which I am both. I am um, both as well, but I'm not going to be on that podcast. Yeah, we, I'm sorry, Dave. We didn't. I don't have enough time to do both. That's but. fair. Uh, so it's going to be fun myself. Fact, we don't have enough mics to handle that. It's only hey, sports for really. enough mics, and that's me. <laughs> uh, but all seriousness, uh, so it's myself and Jordan, who used to be a host of this cast. Uh, a couple friends of ours are starting up a baseball podcast. Um, where we're just going to sort of uh, we're going to do topic of the week kind of stuff, and also do sort of the same things that you'll see you know, as far as I think we're doing. Uh, first episode here which is this week we're going to do some division picks that sort of thing but again if if that is your thing and you're interested and you enjoy listening to this and you want to hear people who are adjacent to this so uh don't let jordan do mfk for baseball oh no 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 no, <laughs> no uh the profession that i am at least one of the person on this podcast also is so no definitely not um but anyways um 
Jeez. Uh, it is called the Church of Baseball Podcast, which is a reference to Bull Durham, not anything to do with actual spirituality. Uh, so if you want to follow us on Twitter, it is church underscore podcast or church underscore baseball. I messed it up already. <laughs> it's church underscore podcast. so new. <laughs> I think you have like three followers so far. That's actually insane. All right. uh, we, have like, we have actually a fair amount of church underscore baseball. So it's at church underscore baseball. And then we also have a Facebook page for Church of uh, Baseball Podcast. So if that is something you're like, ooh, I enjoy both of these very specific things. Uh, and I guess, honestly, in this case, ooh, I really just enjoy baseball because we're not going to talk about magic on that podcast. But please uh, give us a follow and uh, take a listen. It should be up with the next couple of days or so. If, yep. if you need me, um, if you need me to jump on like episode six or around there. Just let me know. Uh, I have a special <laughs> guest. Yeah. I, I think we have like a set core of who it's going to be, but I think some of it may rotate just based on Jordan is doing a, a class, and you know I, I'm I'm doing some other things too. So, and we all, obviously this is this is the the number one podcast for me. Don't worry, guys. I'm not chasing the I'm not chasing the, the dream to the silver screen, not to Hollywood. I'm like. Neither of you assumed that was going to happen. All right, fair enough. No, so, no. But Morgan's going to be our sound guy for that. So if you think that these podcasts sound pretty nice, which they generally do, Morgan does a good job of that, and he has offered to to do our sound for that one too. Pro- producer Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. Why and not? He's wanted that resume credit. Clearly. <laughs> I, I wanted the resume credit of double threat. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, so if you are interested, if not, then I apologize for wasting roughly two minutes of your time. Uh, but yeah, so that should be out uh, probably sometime. I would say next week. We gotta t- discuss release schedules and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, we'll uh, hammer that out, and I'll <laughs> let you know. One of our so one of the people who really pushed for this is very excited about this, but hasn't podcasted before. So he's leaning sort of on myself and Morgan and Jordan. Uh, but he also like the first thing he put out was like first episode will be up Wednesday. Like, but we record Wednesday at night, so no, it won't. That's not <laughs> so. It's not he's a, just a little zealous. Not a realistic. A not a realistic turnaround time. But so. it's all right. We'll uh, we'll set expectations. Yeah. So next week, by for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's going to be it for us this week, uh, at least for this podcast. If you're listening to us uh, via iTunes, feel free to give us a review or uh, a rating, and really appreciate that. Um, if you're listening to us uh, via MTG Cast, be sure to uh, check out some of the other uh, Magic of the Gathering uh, podcasts they have on there. Uh, also, if you want to reach out to us, we have uh, multiple avenues to do so. We have. Um, uh, of course, our Twitter, it's your end step. When you add us, it's at your end step. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. You just do a quick search for uh, uh, at your end step on there. We uh, we show up right in your search results. Uh, give us a like on there, as well as our sponsors, uh, Comic Town Gaming Center and BCW Supplies. Uh, so you can, you can keep abreast with all of their announcements. Uh, we also have an email address, at your end step at gmail.com. And uh, if you feel like uh, making uh, a bit of a contribution to our, our little show here, we do have a Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash at your NSEP, so feel free to sign up and be a patron and get some cool bonuses for uh, being a, uh, a giving member of the At Your NSEP community. Uh, that's going to be everything for us this week. We uh, really appreciate you listening. You have a great one. Bye. Bye.